I'm seeing a lot of people struggling with the new render modes in Blazor. It is mostly pre-rendering that trips developers up. This is because more and more people are looking at Blazor, and with .NET 8, we got a new web app template, and it has pre-rendering enabled by default. So what's the main issue? Well, the main issue is that the content loads twice. So in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can fix that. And we will also take a look at the extremely elegant way .NET 10 solves this problem. There is still a long way to go until .NET 10 ships, but I will be extremely surprised if Microsoft is able to ship a better feature than the one we're going to look at now. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be my favorite feature of .NET 10. <laughs> What is the actual problem? Well, data loads twice. The uninitialized method will run twice. This is because of pre-rendering. So the components run on the server first to generate that initial HTML, the pre-rendering. Then that content is sent to the client where WebAssembly kicks off and starts the component again. Now this time it's on the client side including data fetching and all of that. So why is this? Well, we're missing something. We're missing the handoff between the server and the client. The problem is that the server is doing its thing and then the client is doing its thing, but there are no communication in between. This is solved by using something called persistent component state. And we will take a look at that in just a second. It is a few lines of code that we need to add. Okay, so I have my demo app here, and this demo app is a web app template, and I've done a couple of things. I've added a couple of things to better demo these things. But let's go to the weather component over here. And if I clear the cache, so now I'm removing all the WebAssembly stuff so that we will see a little bit of a delay from the pre-rendering to the uh, WebAssembly parts. And I'm clicking reload here. We will see that it goes static, and then WebAssembly kicks off. And there is a reload of all of the content. Let me do that again. And you should be able to see here the render mode. And if I reload, we now have static pre-rendered content switching over and we're reloading all the data. So that's the problem. The solution is persistent state. The built-in weather component looks something like this. So we have a forecast variable. And if that is null, it is going to show a loading message. If it's not, it's going to show us a table. And if we scroll down here, we can see the code. We have a list of forecasts and we have an uninitialized method that is getting the forecast from a service. This is not the default behavior. The default behavior is actually generating the code right here or the data right here. But I've removed that so we only generate data in one place. And this is probably more like a real world scenario. You got a service, we're getting data and we're setting that forecast variable. So this code has that problem. It's going to load once pre-rendered and once WebAssembly. This also goes for if you're using place a server or the SignalR implementation, it's going to be the same way. We're first going to get the pre-rendered one. And as soon as SignalR kicks in, we're going to get that reload there as well. Now, if we instead pop into this one, where I have added a component state. So I'm not going to build this part because this video is a little bit more about the .NET 10 feature, but I also want to show you the different steps or the different iterations we have to go through to get to that awesome part. So if we want to persist this, we want to inject the persistent component state. This is a component built into Blazor. The rest of the code looks the same. And then down here, we have a persistent component state subscription. And we also have a name. This is an arbitrary name. I just want a name for the saved content. And then we are setting up a subscription. So we're saying that register on persisting. So when this persistent component state subscription thinks that, okay, it's time to persist the data, we're going to run the persist data method. And then we're saying state 
try take from JSON. So we're going to try to get a JSON back from the current state. And if that fails, well, then we're just going to go forecast equals load data sync. So we're going to load that data. If we do get some data back, we're just going to say, okay, the data I got back, I'm going to set that into the forecast variable, and we're going to be good to go. Then if we go down here, we have the persist data method, and then we have state dot persist as JSON, the name, and what we want to persist connected to that name. We also need to dispose the persisting subscription. Awesome. So this is the code that we have to write to get that persisting state working. So what I did was I thought, you know what, there should be a better way. So I came up with this state manager. So this is a component inside of my project here. What I'm doing is that I'm saying get state. So what do I need to get the state? What, do I, what function do I need to run? Well, it's the service get forecast async and the key weather data. I don't have to add anything else to this project, just the state manager. The state manager is taking all of that stuff and encapsulating that into that component. Then down here, instead of using forecast, the variable, I'm using context. So the state manager is providing me with all of this goodness. And if you scroll down here, we don't have a line of code here at all because the state manager is handling all of that. I thought that this was kind of a nice way to, to handle the state. Then Microsoft came around and said, hey, hold my beer, we can do this better. And they absolutely did. Before we go into that, let me just quickly show you the component, the state manager here. So the state manager has that persistent component state in it. It has a render fragment, that's the stuff that's going to render, the table. It has a get state, so that's the method we want to run to get the data back. So we have the key, that would be the weather data key. And then down here, we're doing all of that code. We're doing the persistent component state, we're registering on persisting and all of that stuff, but we're doing it inside of another component. That's how I solved it. So now let's take a look at the .NET 10 implementation. This is using source generators to generate all of that code for us. So in this page, I haven't done any implementation. So if I clear the cache and I reload the component, we will see that it goes from static to WebAssembly and it's still reloading the data. So the persistent part of the code is not in here just yet. I'm going to scroll down here and let's take a look at the code. We have a property called forecasts. It needs to be property. That's a change. And we also have down here uninitialized is getting the forecasts and is still running the get forecast async. Now, check this out. What we need to do is that we need to add a supply parameter from persistent component state. Longest attribute name ever. So now it's going to make sure that the data is persistent. It's persisting the data and also getting the data. We need to do one more thing because the uninitialized method is going to run every time. So if we simply go here and we add two question marks, that means that if forecast is null, in that case, please run this method. If it's not null, which is the case when it's getting the persisted data, then do nothing. So if we save this and run the project again, and if you pop into our page here, let's go clear the cache again. I'm going to reload the page, static, WebAssembly. And the only thing we did was we added two question marks and that attribute. Let's take a look at the code once more. We added supply parameter from persistent component state to a property and also said, well, only do this code, only reload the data if the forecast variable is null. I think that this is such an amazing feature. And I think this is going to be my favorite .NET 10 feature. So what do you think? Is this an improvement? Do you like it? Write in the comments below.